There have been weeks of speculation about his future. Now Malaysia's prime minister has shown he's still in the fight. His candidate for chief minister is set to take control in Sabah. The weekend state election has been widely seen as a curtain raiser for the next general election. A tug of war by lawmakers within the GRS coalition after they won Sabah state elections over the weekend. The big question, who to name as chief minister, with the contest boiling down to two names. Hajiji Noor from Prime Minister Muhyiddin's Basatu party and Bang Mokhtar Radin from AMNO. Eventually, both sides agreed on Mr Hajiji. Kami telah bersetuju sebelah suara. Sebelah suara. Bahawa... Mereka telah menamakan saya sebagai Ketua Menteri Sabah. Inilah um, mandat rakyat yang telah berikan kepada kami. Kami akan tunaikan tanggungjawab kami kepada rakyat untuk memastikan Sabah terus maju ke depan. The electoral contest in Sabah was widely seen as a referendum on Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin's seven-month-old administration. It came just days after opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim said he had secured enough support to form a new government, though he still hasn't offered any proof. For the latest, Melissa Go joins us live now. Good evening, Mel. Is this a clear win for Prime Minister Muhyiddin? Well, obviously, it's a sweet victory for Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin and the Gerakan Rakyat Sabah or Sabah People's Movement that he leads. Now, I spoke with some of his party Bersatu leaders earlier today and some were surprised themselves. They didn't expect to win. Uh, the new chief minister, Hajiji, also comes from Bersatu. Now, Mr. Mohidin has openly endorsed 65 year old Hajiji Nora even before the election. Now, indeed, Sabah's victory uh, was largely riding on Prime Minister Muhyiddin's popularity and, of course, the powerful machinery backed by federal resources. So will Prime Minister Muhyiddin be tempted to seize the momentum and call for snap election to shore up his razor-thin majority in parliament? Well, for the ex-ruling party AMNO and its partner in Muafakat Nasional, the Islamic Party PAS, both are eager to go to the people because they think that they can win big this round. Sources close to the Prime Minister's office are telling me that it will be unwise for the Prime Minister to do so because COVID-19 pandemic is not over. In fact, it's flaring up, especially here in Sabah. There's been triple-digit increase in new cases reported the past week, and now it's spreading to the peninsula as voters return to West Malaysia. And that's why the health authorities are screening everyone now who returns from Sabah at airports and to undergo self-quarantine for a few days. Now, also, having a nationwide election is costly exercise especially with the additional SOP built in. Now, it's said to cost over 1.2 billion ringgit. That's about 300 million US dollars. Of course, it's entirely Prime Minister Muhyiddin's prerogative, and he appears to be fighting any attempt to force his hands. Now, if it happens, it will be his call and his own time. Don, see? Mel, a widely anticipated palace statement this evening uh, had no mention of opposition uh, Anwar Ibrahim's bid to form a new government. What's likely to happen there? You know, despite speculations earlier that the palace statement uh, today, I turn out to be the king's expressing his concern over the sudden jump in COVID-19 cases the past week, uh, with more than 30 uh, patients reported in Peninsula after the return from Sabah. Now, he also reminded the people to adhere strictly to the SOP, look after themselves while he's recovering, he said, uh, from food poisoning as well as sports injury that he had in the past. Now, the king is an avid sportsman, but there is no cause for concern. He said he's recuperating at the National Heart Institute and will be returning to the palace as soon as he's well. Now, that's all the statement. There's no mention of opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim's schedule.